Born and raised in poverty in Greenwich Village, Gene Tunney took up fighting to defend himself. After serving as a Marine in World War I, he defeated Jack Dempsey for the World Heavyweight title in 1926. Tunney earned $1 million with the win, the first time that an athlete had earned a seven-figure check. That was more money for an hour of work than Babe Ruth made in his entire baseball career. Reminding many of gentleman Jim Corbett, Tunney had a high appreciation for art, literature, and intellect. When Tunney was heavyweight champion, he gave a lecture on Shakespeare at Yale. He retired undefeated as a heavyweight following his bout against New Zealand's Tom Heaney in Yankee Stadium in 1928. Gene Tunney, the winner by a TKO, and still the world heavyweight champion. Tunney became a Navy lieutenant put in charge of physical training. In late 1939, Great Britain was at war with Nazi Germany, but the United States was neutral. Tunney made a move that would result in the formation of the Central Intelligence Agency, the CIA. J. Edgar Hoover, director of the Federal Bureau of Investigation, the FBI, and Tunney were acquaintances. So were Tunney and a British military officer, William Stevenson. They had met during World War I. We are the chosen few. By this time, Stevenson was under instructions from British Prime Minister Winston Churchill to try to establish an intelligence agency between Britain and America. Tunney introduced Hoover and Stevenson. Hoover then went to President Franklin Roosevelt, who approved the Secret Intelligence Alliance. An office was set up in Rockefeller Center by the British, run by Stevenson under the guise of being a British passport office. There, American and British intelligence secretly collaborated. The lead American intelligence officer was Colonel Bill Donovan. Wild Bill, as he was known, was a former Columbia football star. He was also a World War I hero when he was part of the 69th Regiment on Lexington Avenue, the Fighting Irish. He set up an office one floor above the Brits. Donovan and Stevenson worked together to develop the CIA. The creation of the agency was formally approved after Japan's surprise attack on Pearl Harbor. At the time of the bombing, on December 7, 1941, Donovan was one of the more than 55,000 spectators at Tuffy Lehman's Day. The Giants running back was honored before the game with the Brooklyn football Dodgers at the Polo Grounds. President Roosevelt urgently needed to speak to Donovan before deciding on America's immediate actions. At the end of the first quarter of the Giants-Dodgers game, the public address system blared a message that Donovan call Operator 19 in Washington immediately. The game went on, and a news bulletin interrupted the game's WOR radio broadcast. We interrupt this broadcast to bring you this important bulletin from the United Press. Flash, Washington. The White House announces Japanese attack on Pearl Harbor. Donovan found a phone booth under the bleachers, and more than 150 years after Nathan Hale's hanging by the British, started working with the United States President and the British Prime Minister on a plan to defend the two nations. Tunney left the military and in 1946 became chairman of the board of the Denman Tire and Rubber Company and the sister McCandless Corporation. He was also a director of more than a dozen other companies. Tunney worked from an office on the eighth floor of 52 Vanderbilt Avenue, the tower that adjoins the Yale Club. He often proclaimed that learning lessons through sports is necessary for effective leadership. P.S. The Dodgers beat the Giants 21 to 7.